Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to this new video. As you know, I share with you most of my small projects. So today I'm going to work on this laptop. It's a laptop actually. Let me show you. See, this is an old laptop where I use my home services or where I installed most of my home services that I had on my home rack. As you might have noticed, I don't have the home rack installed yet. If you've seen my old videos, I had a rack with a bunch of servers where I had GNS3 and all kind of home services for my home network. So that um, home rack is not installed in this new home and I'll tell you why. So that's why I'm using this one now and I have to upgrade the memory on this computer from 16 gig to 32 gig. I just got these two uh, memory delivered about a week ago from China and uh, I'm going to do an upgrade right now. So today I will just tell you exactly why my home rack or my home lab is still down and what I usually have on that rack and what I'm going to use this computer for. And then I will dive in into the inside of this computer to tell you exactly what I have installed and everything. And I will then upgrade the memory to 32 gig and then we'll check and make sure it's upgraded. So first of all, why my home lab is down or why my rack is down. The rack was good. I had it when I was in an apartment and I had the whole HVAC system installed because the little storage room that I had the, the rack in was getting hot at some point. So I had the HVAC in the back and everything it was working fine. And I was also getting a lot out of it because I learned a lot with the rack, with the servers, first how to install it. And second, all the services that I was running on those servers. I had a Windows a server, I had uh, an Exchange server, I think. I had Linux machines, I had a bunch of things. So it's good, it was good, it was a good investment. Even though it comes with all the cons of having a rack in your apartment or your house, because when you have a rack like that, those servers are very power consuming. So you will have a high electricity bill. For example, when I was in an apartment, without the server, I was paying almost 80 bucks a month or $80 a month for electricity. But when I had the, when I had the servers hooked up, I was paying about 250 or $300 of electricity, which is high. It's also not bad, I'm not complaining because I take it as an investment because I was learning a lot with the lab, so I couldn't complain about the, the electricity bill and I had a good job. So it was a win relationship anyway. I was the one winning by having those kind of services. And then I had to move out of the apartment to come into this new home here. And since I've been here, I've never had a time to reinstall my servers, even though I was thinking of doing it and getting the whole HVSC system back again, because the HVSC system that I had there was kind of automatic. I mean, it was automatic because I had a Python script running on, the, on one of the Linux machines that I had. If the temperature goes beyond a certain threshold, the, the script will activate the HVAC system or the blower, and the blower will blow out the, 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 the hot air. And then when the temperature was dropping below a certain threshold, it was cutting it off and all of that, just to save. Because the blower itself, it's like 500 watt, so I didn't want to have it on all the time. That's why I was uh, doing it. So I moved in here, and I didn't have enough time to get it installed. I really didn't need it, per se, because I already made videos about it. I already knew what I was running on it. And I have this computer here that I built in front of you. There's a video where I showed you how I built this um, customized desktop. So it has 96 gig of RAM. It's i9 with 500 gigahertz of turbo. That's where I have my GNS3 uh, server running right now. I can run a kind of topology using this desktop. So that's why there was no incentive for me to get the rack up unless I have something to do with it. Like I'm thinking of a project where I can have the servers installed and all the students on kbtronics.com that don't have enough power on their laptop, they can connect to my home uh, GNS3 server and then do what kind of uh, practice on it. So that's something I'm thinking of. I don't know if it's possible with GNS3 because I have to have enough users, I mean, uh, different users and give authentication to all those users. That's why I need the, the Active Directory and I also need some way of managing the VPN because those students will have to create a VPN from their laptop to my FortiGate. And then from there, they can get into the GNS3 and, and do a bunch of things. So that's a project that I have in mind. I haven't really spent a lot of time on it. But when it comes around, I'll, I'll let you know. So this is what I'm currently using as my home lab, quote unquote, because um, it's an old laptop. I didn't have any use for it. It's good. It's powerful, as you're going to see. It has a good CPU. Right now, it has 16 gig of RAM. It just was broken. The screen was broken and I couldn't replace it. It was just too expensive to get it replaced. So I just 
started using it as um, a home lab or a home computer. Okay, what kind of services do I run here? First of all, I have a Windows Server 2019 installed on here. On the Windows Server, I have my DNS and DHCP. First, I was using the DNS and DHCP on the FortiGate, which is my firewall. But as you know, the firewall is not really made for that. The firewall is made for security. So some extra services of like DNS or DHCP, if you want to have all the options of it, you need to have a Windows Server, something similar, where you can um, you can use that without any problem. So I have Windows Server installed here. I also have Active Directory on the Windows Server where I can have multiple users. As I told you about the product, I mean the, the project on having people connecting to my servers, Active Directory will help me manage those users and create accounts for them and everything. I also have the CA or Certificate Authority running on this computer. It just helps me make sure that all the computers are trusting each other with the digital certificates that I'm uh, sending from that CA. I also have a Linux computer running on here. The Linux computer is just good because I have a couple of things running on it. I have a no IP service running on it where the, the agent updates my uh, my home IP address all the time because sometime when I'm out and my home IP changes because I didn't know, I mean, first I thought that the IP would change only if my firewall goes down, but sometime the ISP can just change your public IP. And if you don't know what the IP is, you're going to be locked out. You can VPN into it. So I have uh, a no IP account set up where my home IP is updated regularly. And I also have some Python scripts running on the Linux machine daily for some of the tasks that I do here internally. Some of the services like the storage, I have a NAS, I have an actual NAS that is sitting on my rack right now, my small rack. The NAS has five terabytes of disk where I do my backups and all kinds of things. And I also have services like a database. I have MariaDB installed on there. I also have an Apache server running on the NAS. So that's what I'm using this for. And now I'm going to dive into it to show you exactly what I have inside. First of all, um, the way I connect to it is using um, RDP. If you can see here, I have a cable connected to it. This is a network cable going to my home network. And all I do is just come into my computer like this and I will go on uh, RDP and then I'm going to take hp.local. hp.local, that is the computer that I have on the table here. So if I open a connection to hp.local, you can see that I have access to it. And I, this is the DNS actually from the Windows server. That's why I don't have an IP here. So if I log into it, you can see that we have the VMware workstation. And inside workstation, I have this Windows Server 2019. I have the Linux computer that I told you. I also have Genesis with VM. And this is just my laptop that I've been using for a while now for many reasons. Usually, I always have a VPN connection activated with NordVPN so that I can do a bunch of things anonymously without, being, without leaving out my public IP. Uh, like when I download movies and all kind of things. But uh, yeah, this is the computer that I put out there and I can do those kind of activities because I can reinstall it anytime without losing any, any data. And uh, it's also connected to my NAS. If you look at here, there is a NAS here called Multimedia where I have a bunch of folders and movies and things. And this is accessible from this computer here. It's also accessible from my main desktop and from my MacBook. So all of that is here in the NAS. And if we go inside the Windows computer or the Windows server, I do winsert.local. So this is bringing us inside the Windows uh, server 2019, where I have services running here. I have uh, Active Directory, I have DHCP, I have DNS. I also have IIS um, activated here. So this is for the Windows server. And I'm happy with the result. I'm happy with what I do with it so far. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. This is the, the Linux computer that I told you about. So this is on my main uh, desktop and I just have an SSH session to that uh, Linux machine running in this virtual environment. And I'm happy with it so far. I'm happy with the service. So that's why I ordered the extra RAM to make sure it has enough memory to support whatever I'm going to throw at it. So if you have your own computer with low memory, you can upgrade it. Mostly you can double it without any problem. Now I'm going to upgrade the RAM on this computer here. This is my phone. I just have everything written down so I can make sure that I cover everything because as you know, I do French and English. Sometimes I notice that there are things that 
that I mentioned in the French version and I forget to mention in the English version and vice versa. So I usually write uh, some bullet points here where I make sure I cover everything. All right, so now I'm going to do the upgrade. First of all, I need to shut down this computer. So to do that, I just need to go inside the computer itself with RDP and I'm going to shut it down. I don't have to shut down the workstation, the VMware workstation. It's going to shut down itself. So I don't have any concern with that. And meanwhile, my network is going to miss the DNS and DHCP. That's fine. I'm going to do it quickly in about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, the computer is now shut down. I can go ahead and proceed with the upgrade. All right, so as you can see, this is the state of this computer. It's very, it's not old, but it was just broken. I removed the DVD reader on the side and uh, here we have these different connections we have hdmi and uh, sdk sd card and everything here so yeah the the screen was just broken and i didn't want to spend a lot of money to replace it because i was it was a custom build so i just stopped using it and uh, i went to a different computer so let me open it and i'll show you how i will change the ram all right as i told you i don't have any screw or anything so here you can see the back with the battery and everything so this is the motherboard itself and here you can see the two memories this is eight gigabyte and eight gigabyte for a total of 16. so if you want to change it what you can do is order new ones and to order some new ones it's always safe to come inside and see what you have and if we open this you can see that um, we have some numbers here as you can see, this one says P3L and so on. So if you are looking for a new one, make sure you have this same number on the new one and it should be compatible. And when you get the new one, like this one here, this one is the same number, but this is 16 gig. So you're just gonna bring it here and go in your, in your laptop and replace it. Going to push it down here and you should have a click. So the first one is in, now we're going to insert the second one. All right, so we have the new memories installed. So now we're going to make sure everything works fine. I'm going to power on the device connected to the network. Uh, this is the power cable and the ethernet cable. Right now I'm just flying blind here. I don't know what is the output on it. I just hope it's going to come online because I don't have any um, screen or any monitor connected to it. So we're going just to hop and I'm going to learn some pings here to make sure I'm going to ping it when it's up. Yeah, I was about to get worried and now I have some pings back from this computer here, which is good. Let's go ahead and open a D, um, um, an RDP session to it. Okay, it's up. So now let's go and make sure we have 32 gig. I go under this PC properties and I click. Okay, as you can see now we have 32 gigabyte of um, RAM and uh, this is good. So now I can have some more services. I can give some more memory to the uh, Windows server and the more memory to the Gen 3 server as well or the Linux computer. I can have more Linux computers on it. This is very good. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. And um, if you are studying for the CCNA, go on kbtrains.com. That's where there's a course where you can go from zero to engineer. And if you want to keep in touch, go on Instagram or Facebook, find KB Trainings. You can 
ping me there. I really like to read you and answer. I always answer to all the messages that I receive. So if you want to uh, keep in touch, go there and send me a message. You can also leave any comment that you have below. That would be appreciated. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And my personal channel is back online because it's been a while since i posted so now i'm posting new videos on it it's called do it with gear you do things with me i bring you in my world here i only do it networking and all of that but on a personal channel i do all kind of personal projects that i do here so if you think we are the same kind and we like the same thing let's go on do it with gear and we're going to do things together until then take care and bye